Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are going to do part two of the unboxing video and we're going to do 10 designs using some of the products in this box. This video is sponsored by DK Beauty, so any of the items that I share with you in this video are available there and I do have a discount code for you guys to save 10%. I picked a variety of different shapes of these Opre tips and we're going to use the Gel X tip primer to prep them all. This kind of acts as like a two-sided tape. First look that we're going to start with is this metallic watercolor floral. We're going to take that linen color, which you guys are going to see a few times in this video. We're going to do two thin coats of this down and I love that it's like a milky see-through type of color, but it's like a creamy beige type of color. I really, really like this shade. Just to give it some extra depth, we're gonna take Fusion's Harvest Matte Top Coat. This is a really nice glittery matte top coat that has like iridescent type of flux in it. I like using this one for layering a lot. This is the plate that we're gonna use. It is called Delicate Garden. I'm gonna use this stamping polish, which is number 60, and it is a beautiful metallic brown, and I love stamping outlines with this particular color. I'm gonna stamp two of these outlined florals on the design here. I really like working with this metallic watercolor palette from Clear Jelly Stamper. I'm going to start by just prepping the watercolor palette by spraying it with some water. If you guys have any questions about working with watercolor, I do have an online workshop for it. And we dive into the basics of working with watercolor, how to remove color, how to add it, how to blend, all of those type of things. And that workshop dives in more to what I'm doing here. But essentially I'm putting the color down and then to blend it out, I'm removing all of the product on my brush here and I'm just going to blend it all out until I get the look that I want. I do like working with a couple different tones of the colors that I'm working with. So with that pink, I do have uh, some really nice light pink and bright pink. And then with the purple here, I have like a darker purple and I'm actually going to mix up my own like lighter version of a purple so that I can do some blending here. Now for the best part, we are going to top coat everything. We're going to see that matte top coat sparkle kind of popping through here. And we're going to see that really pretty metallic of the flowers. For this look here, we're going to create some solid floral looks with a really fun background again. So we're going to start with this vintage carnation color that you guys would have seen in that unboxing video. This is a milky type of gel polish and I am using a neutral tip underneath it. So I'm only going to do one coat. Then again, to add some more layering, we're going to work with the Coco and Claire matte top coat in a pink glitter. And I'm going to use this stamping plate here, which is a really great floral. I like this one because it's only two type of stamping. So you have like your center and then you have your outline. Uh, so I find it to be a really versatile plate as far as this look that I'm showing you here where we're just stamping the centers. Uh, but it's also a really good plate for working with watercolor too because it's got some great outlines for it. So I'm gonna take a variety of kind of pink and um, like a maroon type of color and we're just gonna layer down the centers of the florals. We're gonna do three of them. This plate also has really good centers for the florals. So if you're not gonna work with the outlines, you can just stamp the centers on top of the flowers and it gives it a really fun look. I love working with this with a bunch of different bright colors. I think it looks really cool. I decided to go in with a gold stamping plate for the centers. A black looks really good with it too. It actually really pops and it almost makes the colors of whatever flowers you're working with stand out a little bit more too if you do the centers in black. Sometimes I like doing these center florals like this without greenery, but sometimes I do like to include some of the greenery too. And again, this plate works so good for the different greenery that is on it. I'm going to take this leafy image right here and I'm going to stamp it kind of on the side here. I'm sorry that it's difficult to see with my glove in the way, but I do have some of the leaf left and I'm just going to flip my tip around and put some of the stamp on the other side here. So when you pull it up, I'm going to end up having two different leaves. And I thought this gave it a really cool look. I'm just just going to top coat this one and I do like doing this type of look with a matte design too. It works really really good. So this is the completed look and it is super simple for spring. 
To create this butterfly stamped image, we're gonna create a background that is all nice and marbled. I'm gonna take these Luxio colors and I'm just gonna place them on a little ring palette here. I do work a lot from the brush too, which unfortunately I didn't film that part accidentally, uh, but I did pull the colors down with my brush. You guys have seen me do this a few times. And then I take the ones that are on my little swatch here and I just kind of swirl them together. Now I am barely, barely touching my brush to the gels when I am doing this and I'm going around to just create some fun swirls and drag the colors together and I'm just gonna do this until I'm happy with the look. You guys know I absolutely love marbling. I find it just so relaxing. This step is not at all necessary, but I love working with these gold flakes from the gel bottle. So I did want to put a little bit of them as my background and on top of the marble design here. So I use a brush to kind of place them where I want and because they are a leaf gel, they are super clingy. They're going to cling to that uh, dispersion layer of your gel really, really easily. I am going to go in with a matte top coat and we're going to do some stamping with this butterfly plate. So to tie everything together, I'm going to pick stamping polishes that are just a few shades different than the colors that that we did as our base. So I like to work either light to dark or dark to light when I am doing multiple colored stampings like this. Uh, so I did pick like a darker teal and then like a medium shade of a teal too so that it would match that lighter color of uh, turquoise that we have in the background. You will find me using this brown shade in particular a lot for my outlines. I find that it's not quite as bold and as harsh as stamping in black when you stamp in like a dark brown like this and I love the little sparkles and glimmers of this one. So uh, for the other butterfly, I decided to go with a couple different shades of pink, again, working with like a medium shade and a light shade, and then we are gonna outline in that really pretty brown. Now, this particular butterfly outline had some little lines underneath the butterfly, and I thought that I was gonna be able to make it work with the design, but I didn't really like it. So I'm just gonna use one of those lip gloss applicators to remove the image with some acetone on it. This is one of my favorite backgrounds to do, just a really fun marble like this. And having some really great milky gel polishes like the ones in the Luxio collection that released work perfect. I did throw in one St. Patrick's Day design here. We're gonna do a really nice French using this tea leaf color. I love working with the Opry gel polishes to create any sort of French nails. I would imagine if you were a hand painting artist out there, these probably work really well for that too. Now, when I'm creating my French on press-on tips like this, I have been playing around with actually using gel polish. A lot of times I will lean towards stamping for it. But what I have found when working with these gel polishes in particular is that if I kind of mess up the line I can always kind of work it out with this step where I use the brush of the gel polish to go in and create the remainder of the color I can also take a like a fine liner brush and just really clean up my lines too or I like using uh, this clear jelly stamper brush to kind of remove any excess product but one thing you'll find when I do French nails if I can I will do some sort of embellishment just in case the lines aren't absolutely perfect I was also really excited to use this pink carnation color and also like milky gel polishes in general from Opry a bit more in this video uh, because I really like using them to clean up my French before I go in and do any sort of artwork and this shade is just perfect to do that. We are going to do some chrome stamping so we do want to use a matte top coat before we do that so that the chrome doesn't stick to the entire nail. I'm going to use this one from the gel bottle that is a stunning green just seriously so perfect for St. Patrick's Day. Now you can use the clear jelly stamper sticky polishes or you can use and play around with some of the colors that you have in your collection when you're doing chrome stamping like this. I've been doing this a lot more lately and especially ones that have a little bit of glitter in them because I find that they like pull that chrome really nicely but I find that it makes your chrome even more bold in the nail designs if you go in with a matching color as your base. This is a layered image so I am going to do the next two steps using uh, the green that we used for the chrome stamping as well as number 138 which you guys have seen me rave about many times. It is a super super dark green color but it almost looks black so I thought it'd look really cool with this design but I do think you could have just stopped with the chrome little shamrock and that would look so cute I also decided to go in with this little chrome horseshoe and do some gold chrome stamping on top of that I even thought about adding one more little design on here but I figured if you were doing like a full set you could do a bunch of different charm looking images like this that would look so cute I'm gonna uh, top coat this and this is the finished look 
Next we're going to create this design here which is supposed to look like a glittery sky and grass but now that I'm looking at it a little bit closely I'm going to tell you what I do a little bit differently with this design. So we're going to go in with this Opry's uh, green shade and we're going to use this to create our grass kind of on the free edge of the nail here. I am just loosely putting this on and then I'm going to take my ombre brush and kind of feather the green down a little bit more and then I'm going to go in with this Accents Glitz Play Gel. I have had this in my collection for a while and I am so happy that I'm busting these out again because it is just reminding me how much I love these. They are like a true leaf gel. Like when you think of metallic leaf like you've seen in this video with the gold, that's what these are but in a gel consistency. And um, they are also really easy to work out, like kind of blend down the nail, which you're going to see a couple of times in this video. They work fantastic for an ombre design. So I'm going to do that with this design, Cure It. And then I'm going to go back in and do a little bit more of this green to kind of blend the two shades together so that it has more of an ombre look but we I still want it to kind of look like grass fading into the sky so that I can do some stamping on top of it. After I have my green down and cured it I'm going to go in with my matte top coat to create a nice surface to stamp on top of. Back with that delicate garden plate, I'm going to do the little bike image on here. Now, I think that I would, one, change the shading of the uh, colors that I'm picking. So for this blue bike, I think I would do something that's like not quite as bright to match the background a little bit better. I also think I would add a couple of clouds into the sky and maybe even a little bit of a grass stamp on the bottom if I was to redo this design. I think it turned out okay, but now that I'm like watching the video back, I'm like, hmm, these are some of the changes that I think I might make for this design. I do really like creating like a grass and sky background for different stamped images though. It's one of my favorite techniques. Uh, so definitely play around with some different blues and greens and see what kind of background you can make for those stamped images. This ombre nail design is incredibly easy. Let me show you just how simple it is. So we're gonna go in with some more of the Accents Leaf Gel. This one is in Pink Diamond and it is just such a beautiful pink color. And I'm doing this on top of the Opry's Ombre Tips. So besides using the tip wrap, that's all I had to do with this nail tip here. And I'm putting my concentrated amount down at the cuticle and then I am removing the excess on my brush and then just gently fading it down into the rest of the nail until I get to where I want it to be with the ombre. I'm going to cure that. Then I'm going to take a milky gel polish color like Accents Koi. Uh, this one works fantastic and I'm just lightly kind of going over top of that glittery area. Now you could actually cover the rest of the nail with that color and it would look really cool too. Um, but I did want to create an ombre with that ombre brush. Do a matte top coat so I have a nice layer to stamp on top of. And then we're going to use this Easter stamping plate which I thought would be great to show you guys why I like this plate because I really like these lace images on it uh, but I also liked the sketched Easter images and you'll see me using it in an upcoming nail art workshop because I am going to do an Easter nail art workshop coming up soon and I am for sure going to use this plate with watercolor in it. I did stamp that lace image down closer to the cuticle and I liked how it looked but thought it might look really nice if I added some crystals to it as well. So I'm going to go in with my gem gel and then I'm just going to put some crystals in pink and this white color as well as some pearls just surrounding the cuticle area here. I really like doing this especially for any designs that are like wedding-y like this one kind of is. I'm going to top coat and then the design is complete. Super super simple glittery ombre. This was my first time trying this technique with a cat eye gel polish. So I'm going to go in with that linen color as my base. After it cures, I'm going to remove the dispersion layer and then I'm going to go in with this image from this Easter stamping plate here. It's a floral image. You can do this with any sort of like big background color like this one. And I am going to do a color that kind of matches the background that I did basically just for my outline. Now I'm going to take this gel bottle color, which is a cat eye. It's called Elixir. It is so pretty. And I am going to fill in the image so that I can make it look kind of like cat eye. And I was so excited for this technique. I thought it was going to look so, so cool. And it does for like the background here where I'm creating that magnetic look. I thought it looked really neat. I decided to take some of this Slay glittery gel polish that you guys saw in that unboxing video and I'm going to put this where 
the leaves kind of are with this image. I actually ended up pulling the um, insert here so that I could kind of line things up. I'm okay if it doesn't line up perfectly though because I like when some of the glitter kind of pokes through after I do the stamping. So I am going to encapsulate this with a little bit of matte top coat or you could use like a clear builder. And after it cures, I'm going to file it down a little bit because those glitters were a little bit bulky. Now here is where I kind of wasn't too sure what color to do for the background. And you guys are gonna have to tell me which one you like best after seeing these three here. I settled on number 138, that really dark green color. But again, once I'm watching this back, I'm thinking, you know what, the brown actually would have worked a little bit better for this design. But you guys let me know which one you think here. I'm gonna top coat it and then this look is all done. You can see the cat eye kind of poking through the design now that you've seen the tutorial and it does look really cool. I have really been into mushroom like decor and accessories lately, so I wanted to create a cute look for spring. I'm using a clear tip here, but I want that pinky background. So I am gonna use that pink carnation color. It works fantastic for uh, pink for the backgrounds of French tips. And then I'm gonna take the Accents Luxio color in Cabana, and this is that really bright yellow color. This color is stunning, and I think not only is it gonna be good for spring, but it's gonna be excellent as almost like a bright mustardy yellow for fall all time. I'm gonna take some of that pink carnation color and go up to the French that I created and I find this just kind of makes the color look a little bit more clean for a French. I am gonna do a matte top coat so I have a clean surface to work on top of and then I'm gonna use this stamping plate which is called On the Road Again. It has a lot of really good images on it. It has a wood grain that is fantastic, some cute rainbows, these adorable little mushies. It also has uh, some fun little greenery and little car. I really, really like this for spring, but also summer. And these little mushrooms work perfect here. I did put down like the little grass so that it looks like the mushrooms are sitting on the grass. But you And with this second little mushroom, there is a little center of it that I thought I wanted to make a darker gray color. Now my darker gray that I wanted to use is super, super, thick and if you try and use a super super thick stamping polish uh, for stamping you will have nothing but problems so I'm gonna take some of the clear jelly stamper polish thinner thin out this polish and then it's gonna just go on so much more smooth this mushy didn't actually have little dots on him but I am gonna take some of that uh, gray color and add some little dots because I just think it finishes up the look here top coat and this design is all done I really like adding cute little embellishments to French nails like this one now I am not done using that cat eye gel polish because it deserves a little bit more attention. It is so fun. We're gonna use it as a background for this stamp design here. Uh, so I am gonna go in with my first coat, cure it, and then for my second coat, that's when I'm gonna get my magnet out. Now I have been kind of playing around with the positioning of how to hold my magnet just to get different designs with cat eye gel polish. I honestly feel like I am not very good at working with cat eye gel polishes. And I have seen some really cool things that people have done with it. So I do wanna a little bit more time just seeing how my magnet makes the colors move and with this color oh it just looks so pretty it's a perfect like bronzy gold color especially great for backgrounds like we're gonna do with this one so if I have a color that I want to be poking through my stamped images I like to go in with a big image like this one and I'm gonna do some two-tone stamping here with two different shades of like a peach and a cream stamp that down and then I'm gonna pick a green that coordinates really nicely with it and and stamp my greenery down on top of it. This is another Easter plate that I think is gonna be fantastic for not just Easter, but like the whole entire year. This is where the best part of this design is, top coating and seeing that glitter just kind of poking through on top of the stamped image. Now for our last design, I wanted to create something that's shabby chic, and I think that that mint marina color from Accents that came out in that collection is absolutely perfect for shabby chic type of nails. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do two thin coats and then I'm gonna take some more of those gold flakes and I just want a couple tiny ones of them on this design now I don't know if this part was overly necessary you can see them kind of poking through at the end when we top coat but I do think it would look good on its own too I'm gonna to go in with this daisy plate because I love this image in the right corner I just think it looks fantastic for shabby chic nails I'm gonna stamp the lines down in a green that's just a little bit darker than the one that I used and then a white for the little daisies here and when I went in to do the gold center stamping, I was having a heck of a time like lining these up perfectly and they also weren't as big as I wanted the centers to be. So I'm going to take some of the number 123 stamping polish on my ring palette, use a toothpick that has a really, really sharp edge on it and just add the centers myself. 
I think this looked a lot better than top coat the design and it is all done. It looks really, really cute. I think it would actually look really good matte, but. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it gave you some ideas on maybe some plates to reach for or look for for the upcoming uh, spring season here. I will have a spring workshop coming up very soon on my website. Uh, so make sure you sign up to my email list if you are looking to get on the pre-sale for that and follow me on all of my social media. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.